All right, everyone, once again, this is Fillers Fillers here, bringing you a little bit more Don't Starve. I received a couple requests from people requesting that I play some more Don't Starve, and one of the characters that they wanted me to play was, what's his name, the Solus Automaton, WX78. So, going to start a new game. Uh, I haven't really played this very much since all the updates and all the changes that they've made to it, so we'll see how this works on out. As far as I know, the downfalls of this character is that water hurts him, so rain and things of that nature. And, uh, hold on one sec. Nah, just the normal stuff. <laughs> so, I was going through and doing a little bit of just test runs, uh, going, seeing what's different with the game, uh, you know, kind of getting back into the swing of things. That way that I can actually do a somewhat decent job of recording. Just play a couple of days, just to kind of get familiar with it again. And one of the main things that I noticed since the updates that they made is you can't actually survive an entire night anymore with just a torch. You'd be able to, like pretty much as soon as night came, build a torch and then that would last you almost the entire night if not more so. Which is no longer the case, which actually made me die the first couple times I was playing again. Because I wasn't uh, ready to have another torch available to light up. And uh, they also used to make it, at least for Wilson and some of the other characters, is that if you went and it was dark too long, you would take some damage, but you wouldn't die right away. At least from what I remember. I could be totally wrong about that. But I remember that darkness, it took a lot of your life away, but it didn't instantly kill you. Uh, maybe he just doesn't have enough life. <laughs> I, I think Wilson might have 150, I'm not exactly sure. So, with that situation, um, pretty much, I was just going through and playing it, and maybe about three-fourths of the way through the first night, I would just run out of power, run out of light, and then just get my butt kicked and die. So, once again, playing it a couple times, figured out exactly what I needed to do to kind of get back into the swing of things, so let's give it a shot. Now, I think since the last updates, they've added some more things to build. Um, I think they might have added a new biome. I don't believe about that. The other thing that they added was the, the, like the underground caves where you can go underneath. And instead of there being like trees, there's a whole bunch of mushrooms. I remember checking that out before. And that was pretty cool. Um, but when I was actually checking it out, it was still pretty hardcore beta. And <laughs> it was glitchy. And like you can go down there and... You can pretty much spend as much time as you want down there, and no time above would pass. I don't know whether or not that's the intention, but I just thought that that was kind of incorrect and wrong. It was also really, really, really damn hard. So, I think that when I was going in, I was playing the, the big beefy dude. Ah, I can't remember his name right now. Um, but regardless, going and playing him where he attacks harder, he has more health, and... I remember the big problem that I was having with him is that he just kept on going insane. There's like nothing I could do. Uh, I'd go around, pick up flowers, and I'd go and make stuff, and I'd eat stuff, and he just constantly, consistently just ended up going insane. And uh, <laughs> I just couldn't find enough stuff in order to go and counter counteract that. That might have just been my play style. Maybe I just uh, was doing something wrong, or maybe that there's a way to actually uh, create your own flower beds and stuff like that. Because I know that actually picking up flowers restores your sanity again. So, for those of you that are new to this, I went and created an axe, which consists of twigs and... I think it's fun. Yeah. And so how this game works, so you go and you pick up resources, and based on the resources that you have available, uh, you're able to actually go and create new items, combine them together. Um, this is also one of the new updates that they did, where like you go and chop down trees and stuff like that, there's a little bit of extra animations, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can tell whether or not there's something new for you to actually create based on whether or not there's a light bulb displaying over the icons on the left hand side. So I can see just based on the fact that each one of these I have enough resources to create some new additional items. Um, but based on the fact that I played this before and it's kind of familiar with the things that are available for you right off the bat, I know that nothing else that's available to me at this current moment I need. What I will need to do, though, is create two torches. Um, the game works in light cycles, so you have the daytime, which if you look at this little sundial, I guess you could call it, uh, the yellow time is when it's actually during the daylight, and 
uh, the little red area is sort of twilight. So that's kind of getting ready, letting you know that, you know, nighttime is approaching. And some of the, like for instance, there's some enemies that actually come out during the twilight that you can actually start attacking, and they're around uh, towards the nighttime. So you kind of have this, this difference of characters you can interact with during the daytime to characters you can interact with during the nighttime. And so not only is it a warning, but it also lets you go and uh, kind of farm some of those more difficult items and more difficult enemies. Uh, you'll also go and see as you're walking on around, I haven't actually seen any yet this game, is that there's these red mushrooms and there's also blue mushrooms. I believe the red mushrooms increase your insanity, or actually, I should say decrease it out of your little menu bar. They make you go more insane, and the blue mushrooms, which only come out during the twilight at night time, uh, you know, make it so that you become more sane, so your sane meter increases. For those of you that are also new to this series, uh, you have three little... Uh, gauges on the right hand side you have your health which is for each character it's slightly different. For this character his max health is 100 which isn't all that much. You have your uh, food which is I guess your, your hunger meter which constantly and consistently decreases throughout the game. Actually, alright so I just made another axe and let me go and create two torches just <laughs> just to be on the safe side. <clears throat> So yeah, as you can tell, your health, or not health, but your hunger meter consistently and constantly just starts going down. And various items that you pick up allow you to get your uh, your hunger meter back up. And various items, they increase your hunger by various amounts, as well as uh, there's abilities to cook things, and there's also stuff like, you know, um, if you make a campfire, you can actually cook your food. So let me eat some berries. For instance, it's 59. Eat a berry. goes up to 68, so it's about 10 each time. And let's see. All right, I'm gonna wait until it actually starts getting super twilight. There we go. So if you couldn't imagine, the dark and nighttime is actually very bad for this game. Uh, <laughs> this is pretty much when you're at your weakest. Your sanity constantly decreases. Uh, actually, let me make myself a little garland. Uh, by having the garland, it actually increases your uh, sanity. Instead of it being decreased, it kind of increases constantly. So it's kind of a good thing to have if you're starting to go insane or if you're having difficulties. Uh, one of the cool things about this game is that as you go more and more insane, like for instance the max is 100, I think at around 75 you start actually seeing some changes. Like during the nighttime you'll see eyes around the corners, and then you'll also kind of go and see like shapes off in the distance which is a pretty neat effect, especially if you've never seen it before. And I think the other levels are at like around 50. Um, some other changes happen. Uh, the screen starts wobbling around a little bit and it becomes kind of difficult to see. And at I think around 35 is when things are just batshit insane for you, you know? <laughs> some of the, the ins things of the insane world start coming to life and they actually start attacking you and coming after you. Now, oh shit, uh, there we go. I wasn't even, I was just busy talking, wasn't even noticing what was going on in the, the world. So, actually, what I'm, what I'm doing right now is, hold on, let's get rid of that torch, and let me look at my map real quick. And zoom in just a little bit. If you couldn't notice, what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of going and searching around, looking at what's available to me, um, exploring. And actually, let me make a new tool. I need to make a pickaxe, which requires twigs and flint. And with pickaxes, you can actually go and mine these little rocks. And they'll drop you stones and flint, sulfur, and sometimes gold. And you're going to need gold for a bit. And cool. Pick up a spear. And let's see. Pick up box thing. Evil flowers. Um, the box thing are items that allow you to go and create some crazy sort of teleporter. In all the games that I've played, I've never actually created and actually built a teleporter because you have to just randomly stumble across them in the little areas, but you can systematically kind of notice if you're getting close to them because you'll see something like that, a ring of some type, or, or something that's you know, kind of foreign to what the landscape presents itself to be. Let me see. I need to create myself a backpack. Uh, backpack. Oh, I need a science machine. Okay, so I'm going north this for, the, for a bit. Now, if you're not familiar with the way that I generally go and play these games, 
some of the things that you can come across in this game are like pick villages. And what's great about pick villages is that they're, you know, just NPC characters. They're pigmen, and they'll kind of guard you um, if you're being attacked by stuff. And they'll also have usually a bunch of different various good items to have around. They'll have usually a bunch of berry bushes. They'll have a bunch of uh, various um, other plants that you can kind of go and farm, as well as sometimes they'll have something called the pig king. Now, what's good about the Pig King is you can give him meat, pretty much any type of meat that you get, and he will just give you gold. And as time goes on, uh, you kind of start running out of flint, and you can actually create all the actual tools with gold instead of flint. And they'll last a lot longer and they're a lot better. And once you kind of go and get used to the game, well, there's a red mushroom. And once you kind of get a little bit farther in the game, you can very easily, you'll, uh, what I'll actually end up doing is creating grass and um, twigs and stuff of that nature and allow you to make myself as many traps as I need and then I'll just sort of farm the little animals and I'll use that uh, meat that I get off the animals to to create gold and then use that gold to create myself good tools. So it allows me to kind of have an uh, infinite supply and let me kind of go and focus on various other aspects of the game and not worry about uh, you know collecting some of those uh, harder to find resources as time goes on. Otherwise, you kind of have to constantly be going and looking around and, and exploring different areas. And what I like to end up doing is sort of create myself a home base and then, you know, pretty much have all the, what is it, like the twigs that I need and the, and the straw that I need, or whatever, grass. Oops. As you can see, I'm actually out of carrying capacity for that stuff. And I'll need a backpack, but in order to do that, I need to create myself a science machine. Let me see. Science machine. Where is the science machine? The science machine is going to be under science. And, as you can see right there, I don't actually have any gold to create myself a science machine. So, yeah. What I am actually doing right now, let me look at the map again, is I'm looking for a pig village. <laughs> Size on grave, huh? So these little guys, those are spider nests, and when it actually turns to twilight time, spiders come out. Or if you attack them during the daytime, a whole bunch of spiders come on out. So you end up going in. You need the the silk that they drop. So you end up going in, kind of farming those guys after a bit. And sometimes what's worked out best is you actually go through and you kind of try to find a whole bunch of little spider areas. There, there's a spider dude. Look at the little happy faces. You try to go and find a, a pig village that's next to a spider area, and then the pigs will actually go and fight all the spiders. And sometimes the pigs die, but you know they actually come back after a couple days. But they'll go and they'll kill the spiders, and then they'll go and they'll you know leave the the silk as well as you can actually go and uh, essentially kite the spiders, attack them, and then the spiders will uh, come after you, and then lead them on over to where all the pigs are. Oh no, he's coming after me. So, and then you just kind of head on over and <laughs> let the pigs take care of them. And, uh, let me go and eat some food. There we go. Top myself off. So, it allows you to go and create, essentially, some additional supplies. And, uh, the things that you can create with silk are, what is it, like some, you can create some fishing. So you, you'll you run across ponds and things of that nature, which will allow you to go and uh, catch fish. And, uh... There's a lot of other little things that you can create using the, the silk that they drop. Let me look at my map again. Huh. That was unfortunate. Also, if you're looking for particular resources, uh, it's always good to look at your map and see whether or not you can actually find the content that you're looking for. Just to save yourself a little bit of work. Sometimes you are you know end up being so damn far away that uh, you can't actually find the stuff that you're looking for anymore. You gotta keep on wandering off. Now, at the beginning of the game, they usually go and start you off next to a whole bunch of different various, you know, berry bushes. So, if you go and you find your pig village or whatever you end up going and actually creating your home base at, um, what you're gonna want to end up doing is set yourself on up and then get yourself situated so that you can go back to your starting area and then essentially uproot all these berry bushes and bring them on back to your home camp and uh, essentially replant them and make it so you can get yourself berries because berries are essentially a free resource to obtain uh, more and additional food, which kind of gets difficult during some of the other situations and setups. 
Oops, no. Okay. Let me see. I'm gonna need to do this torch. Let me drop the nitre. Because I'm gonna need another torch. Let me see. Light. Nope, don't want that. I don't want to get myself in a situation where it's nighttime and my hands are full and I can't actually create another torch and I die. So, once again, just, just exploring right now, picking up whatever I can, whatever I come across, and uh, just seeing if I can find myself a road. Now, most of the time that you actually end up going and coming across a road, it'll lead to some sort of pig village. Now, I found myself a road earlier, and if you look at the map, these little dark areas are the roads, and you actually end up walking and traveling faster on top of them. So, I ended up going and taking it, hoping that it would actually end up taking me to a pig village, but didn't do it. So, still on the on the look. As well as it's kind of always good to explore at the beginning of the game to kind of know what's around you. Sometimes you'll start off the game, there won't be any bees around you, and you need to use bees later on in order to create and get yourself some honey, and uh, which is useful for a lot of various other things. It's like another free resource. Um, once you actually get yourself set up for it, you can just go in and start mining the honey and use it for food. Because as you, you know, with the different, uh, what is it, seasons in this game, where you have, I guess right now it's summertime, and then essentially there's summertime, there's, uh, like, lightning storms. Oops, uh, let me see. There we go. So you'll have thunderstorms just randomly come on up. I think that happens mainly during the, the spring and, and fall seasons more often than not. You look at my map. Okay, just exploring. And so those happen more often than not. And then during the wintertime is when stuff actually ends up freezing and it's snowy. And you have to worry about going and getting yourself warm clothes, <laughs> which kind of blows. And uh, at that time, a lot of the stuff that you usually use for obtaining food, like your berry bushes, they'll freeze over. And the ponds, which you can use to... Oh, crap. Uh, yeah. Rain actually hurts my dude. And I don't think that I can actually do anything right now. Let me do my grass skirt. It just very, very lightly hurts me a little bit. In order to go and protect that, I need to get myself an umbrella, and I don't think I can make myself an umbrella yet. But whatever, it's not hurting me too terribly much. Right now it's just more of a nuisance than anything else. I wonder whether or not... Because you can actually make yourself various types of hats. With my hats. Um, just some berries. Top off my food. Ah! Nothing in the roads there. Let me see. No, 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 no. So here's a wormhole. Now, wormholes um, are kind of bad because... Well, they let you go and quick travel to places. But what they also do at the same time is they, they reduce your insanity. Ah, that was not at all what I wanted to do. It kind of just took me back to my starting area. <laughs> uh, so, as you can see, my, my sanity went down crazy amounts. It also seems that I got attacked and hit by lightning, which I don't, it kind of made me light up. I don't know whether or not that ended up doing anything else, although I am running a lot faster right now. Dude, he's running super fast. Yeah. I don't need any more grass. I need to go and find myself some cover or something. So there are other hats that you can make. I can make myself a straw hat, but I need to have a science machine before I can do that. Hey, cool, another road. And that's a road I've already been on. Okay, so, because of that, let me try going off in this direction. That's what I was looking at it before. This area is pretty much unexplored. Hey, cool, another road. Sorry, taking that sip of beer. Hey, very nice. And let me see, let me, what can I drop? Get some seeds, pick up some gold. Uh, some of the items that you can actually get in this game are some sort of like pendants that actually will give you another life. And you can dig those up via graves. So if you find a graveyard, you generally want to get a shovel and then kind of just dig up all the graves you can. Most of the time you just find absolute junk. But uh, 
in some circumstances, you'll actually find that pendant, or sometimes you'll dig up gold, I believe. I think you can pick up gold sometimes. And once again, the road is ended. With nothing there. Ah, come on, give me something. Also, as you can see, because I'm wearing the little... Um, what is it? What is that called? The garland on my head. It shows that my uh, my sanity is increasing ever so slightly. Let's let's hover over it for a bit and see actually if it does go up. It's at 88 right now. Get this other road. Hey, you know what? Let me get this gold real quick. And because I was able to pick up that gold, I can now create myself a science machine. Also, uh, whenever you do come across flint, you're going to want to pick it up. And just stray rocks too. Those are usually as time goes on, become harder and harder to find unless you just explore new areas. And whenever you see a whole bunch of different various uh, biomes like this coming together, sometimes you'll find weird and strange things, so it's always kind of a good thing to check out. Now let's see... So here's a whole bunch of different rocks, which is going to be great for me when I actually establish my base go back here and pick up all the rocks and gold and flint that I possibly need for a while. Need some more food. Yeah, look at that. It went up one. <laughs> it goes up ever, ever so slowly. Uh, so let me see. Let me look at the map once again. There is... Man, I am just striking out like crazy right now. Now, one of the other reasons why I want to find a pig village so badly is... Hey, this. Tallbird Nest, okay. Tallbirds are those guys, and uh, when I was playing earlier, I actually got myself killed based off of that. Those guys will go and kill you pretty quickly uh, in one or two strikes if you don't actually have any equipment and you don't have any armor on yourself. Now, I can see that I'm also supercharged, I think, based on that lightning strike. I don't know whether or not that will protect me from going and getting killed at night. I'm just going to go and allow myself just a little bit of time. I also see, uh, let's see, oh cool, 83, 84, okay I'm just going to eat all my flowers real quick, because they just give me a little bit of health, because I'm going to need another spot for, uh, what is it, a, another torch in case I actually end up do dying, or I should say, uh, me going and being glow in the dark doesn't actually work for me. So, looking at my map, looking at where I want to explore next. Now, if you're playing this game or you're recently new to this game, uh, one of the things that you can do is you can actually just move around via the WSAD keys, and you can actually go and harvest things just by hitting the space bar. So that's what you're seeing me do a lot, is that I'm just actually moving with my WSAD and then as soon as I get close to something that I want to harvest, I just, you know, hold down the space bar. He does it real quick. It also makes it a lot easier for when you're chopping down trees, and there's a whole bunch of trees all over the damn place. Yeah, there's a pond. And sometimes, like, you know, you want to go and pick up all the contents, and you don't want to actually start chopping down a new tree. Uh, holding down the space, you'll, they'll kind of run around and pick up all the contents real quick, and makes that quite a bit easier. Suspicious Dirt Pile. Uh, those allow you to go and actually find some very, very rare animals. You have to kind of follow them from place to place. So you just look at it and see where the direction of the next part computer pile is. And you have to go through that, that process of going from one to one to one to one. And then that allow you to actually see. Hey, cool, it's working. So being glow in the dark is pretty good now. Better than a torch. Uh, let me see. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to follow this area right down below. I'm going to get ready to use my torch because I have no idea how much longer this is going to last. It actually looks like my little circumference area is getting smaller. Oh, is that another road? There we go. Yeah, my little area of influence is getting smaller. So, ended up going and using my torch as soon as I could. prevent myself from running into mischief. Give me a second as I take a swig of beer. Ah, did the road run out already? Wow. 
Wow, they made finding the pig village just a lot harder than before. Actually, let me be progressive and get myself ready for when my torch dies. So when I was playing this previously and doing recordings previously, like, you'd find a road. And, like, that road would just kind of keep going forever and cross with other roads and you just kind of keep on going. And, you know, sometimes I'd find one, if not two, pick villages. And it was just, you know, working out great for me. And so it's like kind of like, oh, shit, uh, where's it? There it is. There we go. So, nothing there, nothing there. Ah, I'm still feeling the effects of going in that wormhole. Sandy's at 76. With that being the case, that means that I need to go and start picking up some more flowers. Because every single time you pick up a flower, it increases your sanity just a little bit. Get my hunger down. Oh, see so you it on out. So whenever you, once again, whenever you just see a random circle of stuff, that usually means something. Ah, that's right, I already got a spear. And I got myself a grass skirt. So I have some armor. And that was the road I was just at. Ah, so bee flows. Bee flows are great for farming later on, as well as they also drop manure. Manure is great because it allows you to fertilize uh, plants that you uproot. For instance, once you get a shovel and you uh, you can pick up grass, you can pick up the berry bushes, but when you replant them again, they need to be fertilized before they actually start doing anything. What is this? I've never seen that before. Um, that might actually mean something. I'm just not familiar with it yet. So, you need to go and actually either collect manure, or you need to let food rot until it actually becomes, like, compost, I think is what it becomes, or it becomes, like, rotted something, which actually ends up having the same function. Uh, when you go and actually find pigs, usually you'll find them in uh, biomes like this, and they'll be near spider dens, as well as when you get to the spider villages, you can feed them the berries, or any type of food, and generally berries works out best, because they'll just instantly just poop out manure, and you can pick that on up, and, um use that for planting. So it actually works out pretty well in that situation. Hey, cool flower. Nice flower. Um, let me see. I have a whole ton of... I want to go and keep all these box things and ring things because I'm going to need them for later. So let me think. Let me drop this. Pick a flower and eat it right away. Come on. Come on. Also, with this series, I think I'm going to split it up every five days. Uh, my first time through, I was actually splitting up each of my recordings every four days, just based on the fact that I think that at around 16 days is when the uh, the seasons would change, and so it actually ended up being quite nice. Like you'd have four seasons of summer, and then like you'd have essentially like I think 16 days of winter, and then 16 days of other stuff. So it actually ended up going up being a pretty nice break, but. Eh, I don't really care about that anymore. As well as, <laughs> I already missed my first stopping situation, so... I think I'll try the, the five days, see what happens. So at the morning of five, I'll stop, and the morning of ten, I'll stop. At least for the recording of what I'm uploading. So that's a big, huge, giant area. I think that the beefaloes were right around here. <sighs> Where am I going to go? What am I going to do? I haven't really explored this. That doesn't look very promising. Um, I might need to go over here. Now, the problem that I also run into is there's sort of like little mini bosses every five to seven days, and you'll hear it by the fact that they'll uh, your dude will start saying, "I hear something" or "Something's coming." Every character actually says something different, and that's letting you know that like hounds are coming after you. And uh, if you're not ready for it and you don't have uh, defenses like that, the first time only one hound actually comes for you. But as time goes on, you'll end up going and having to fight yourself like 
uh, yeah, like two or three or even four hounds. And so having a pig village to run to will actually you know, kind of save you from getting your ass kicked just because, you know, the, the pigs will fight them off for you and kind of keep you safe. But also, as you can tell, you can't really go and start the game very much until <laughs> you create yourself a base because that's all, our, all your inventions are. Now when I save that, I mean, um, you need to actually build a science machine. Now, earlier when I was talking, I was saying I couldn't actually make a science machine because I didn't have any gold yet. So now that I have gold, I can do that, and that allows me to uh, obtain more additional crazier inventions and crazier things to build with, you know, crazier resources. And so until I do that, I can't, like, you know, do things. Oh, sweet. So this is an eye bone. Having this has this little dude, though, the Chester, will start following you around. And what he's good for is that you can pretty much put all sorts of various crazy things inside of him. And he'll just hold on to it for you. So, he can be killed. So if you're <laughs> you're running around or you're going to do something dangerous, you're going to want to go and drop the eye bone because he goes wherever the eye bone is. So if you actually place the eye bone down on the ground, uh, he'll stop following you and he'll just kind of stay stagnant. So sometimes when I'm going to do something dangerous or go on a long journey, uh, I'll just go and I'll leave him at home because it really, really, really sucks when you're traveling around and he dies. Uh, some dudes would just go and start attacking him and killing him. And when that happens, all the stuff that's inside of him spills all over the place. Now if he dies, he comes back maybe in about three or four, maybe even five days. But, like, it's it's just one of those things where you're... <laughs> it's better to just not let him die. Alright, so I've already kind of explored this area, and uh, that's where the water is. So let me see. I might go up north and try that right there. Because that's a wormhole I haven't been in. And I'm hoping that takes me to a part of the map that I have, uh, haven't been to yet. Now, previously, in uh, earlier versions of the game, if you went into a wormhole, Chester wouldn't follow you. I think they actually fixed that. So now he'll actually follow you into, into new areas. And that'll actually save me from having to go back and find him. Or maybe he eventually catches up to you. I don't know. But that was one of those things where you have to kind of not do wormholes just based on the fact that you can bring your little uh, treasure chest with you. Okay. Exploring, exploring, exploring. Picking up food. Getting ready with my torch. And now. Make myself an additional torch. I also think that, based on what I just saw and heard, Chester didn't follow me. So this is the one I haven't been into yet. He's right there, right now. So let's try this out. <sighs> yep, see, cool, he's there. Alright, so this is a part of the game I haven't actually been to yet. And, ooh, this is, this is like the swamp biome. And which is kind of bad for me. Good now that I'm out of it. Because uh, those actually have a bunch of crazy little tendrils that come up out of nowhere and uh, <laughs> attack you and kick your butt. So starting off new and fresh in the game, you get your butt kicked rather quickly and uh, better to avoid. And you'll know you're kind of getting close to one because you'll see spiky trees and spiky bushes and stuff like that. Ah, sweet, another road. And that's a plug sinkhole. I think if I destroy that, that'll allow me to go into the, the caverns under underneath the ground which I was telling you about before. So I... oh shit, no. There we go. I'm not used to that anymore. That was weird light just coming. Target acquired, target acquired. I was just kind of interested in why this is for Britley. Britley Blade. Oh, okay, there's fireflies that are hidden over here. So. Alright, well that was the end of days 1 through 5. Oh, shit. So, thank you so much, and uh, hope to bring you some more.